and welcome. Welcome. We are inside UEFN, a guided tour of UEFN, which is Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Now, I'm going to start by going to the Epic Launcher. And it seems redundant, but I will mention it anyways. If you are not yet signed up with an Epic Games account, then head over to unrealengine.com and grab an account there. I'm going to go there right now just to show you because you never know if somebody does not have an Unreal Engine account. And this is recorded, so I do want to make sure everyone knows. Jump in and sign up here to get an Unreal Engine account. Once you're there, you're able to download and launch the Epic Games Launcher, which is where we are going to be right now. Inside the Epic Games Launcher, in the store, you're going to search for Unreal Editor. And that's going to pop right up here, Unreal Editor for Fortnite. Now, the thing about Unreal Editor for Fortnite and Fortnite in general is you need both of them in conjunction. You cannot have one without the other. So when you go to download Unreal Editor for Fortnite, UEFN, you'll probably get sick of me saying that by the end of this, um, you're going to have to also download Fortnite. And it is not a small download. Uh, I think it's between... 30 and 90 gigs, depending on how, uh, if you download the extra extra material so it runs a little bit faster. And I do have that on my machine. So UEFN is about five and a half gigs and the full complete Fortnite is around 80 to 90 gigs. So, you know, I recommend having uh, a separate hard drive where you have all of your assets and you got a hundred gigs set aside for these two. And then lots and lots of space for additional assets. This is also where you're going to have Unreal Engine. For those of you that do know about Unreal Engine, welcome. If you don't know about Unreal Engine, that's also fine. I'm going to be uh, going over the whole process here. All right, we're inside the library. Now, I'm going to, I have Fortnite and UEFN already open. And that's not true. I don't have UEFN open, but I'm going to show you Fortnite. This is where most people know Fortnite from the classical Battle Royale. And this is where you have 100 people fly in, enter a island, and the island is the same thing as a level or a map in Unreal Engine 5, and they battle it out collecting weapons, uh, and the storm, which is on the perimeter, shrinks down slowly over time, and then we have all the players until one is left standing. So there's also these building options in here, and that uh, wasn't for everybody. They introduced another form, Zero Build, which is the exact same game mechanic, but you don't have the ability to build any structures. So it was uh, a lot more approachable for uh, people like myself who come from sort of the Call of Duty, uh, sort of the 80s, 90s uh, first person background. So I didn't actually start playing Fortnite at all until UEFN launched. So if you were brand new, then don't worry about it. You're uh, more than welcome to jump in right now. You're not too late. I hate when people say, uh, you know, it's too late. It's never too late. Okay, so what, what am I, where am I? What am I doing now here? These are all custom maps. These are maps made by people like myself and Logan Lewis. I know if he's got a map, go ahead and plug it in the chat there. Um, and I am on my map that I made uh, over Christmas. So they have the discoverability to find all of these maps here in these games, in these custom game modes. They just, I see uh, Byron in here. I need to play that Lego Raft game that just dropped. It just came out yesterday or two days ago. And it's uh, the Lego group. And so there is Lego modes. There's there's so many different types of modes. And that leads me to the, this is actually, Epic is creating the metaverse um, slowly or not slowly. Uh, I don't think it's a secret that they're trying to accommodate every type of game player. So we have your, your classic uh, battle royale and first person and shooting. They've just recently released Rocket Racing, which is uh, a racing game, a lot of fun. Fortnite Festival is sort of the rhythm style game. I'm terrible at these, so I don't really play them. Uh, and then all of these custom games. These box fights are a very, very popular type of game, as are the tycoons. And we have these mega world boss fights, mini game. This is another very popular one. 
I could spend hours just going over the discovery, but the point is these are all custom maps, maps made by Epic, maps made by users just like yourself. Okay, now, now you know about Fortnite, you know about UEFN a little bit. We're gonna dive into it more. I wanna get some of the housekeeping out of the way here. And uh, as usual, I skipped the about CG Spectrum. What is CG, CG Spectrum? It's a global top-ranked training provider in the film and game industry. And they are teaching people all around the world where academic, Unreal Engine academic partners, authorized training centers, uh, Houdini certified school, and authorized Toon Boom. We have an 80% job success rate for the advanced students and alumni across 90 countries. There's also career development services and a vibrant online community. And I really enjoy uh, staying active and engaged with uh, the community as well. A little bit about myself. My name's Logan Pinney, if I didn't mention that. And how did I get to be here in front of you now? Well, once upon a time, I was actually a respiratory therapist and an as an anesthesia assistant. I left that all behind and went and met my wife and went and lived in the forest for several years at the Hollows Camp, where I developed my motion graphic skills and my 3D and 2D animation skills. And I began working with the School of Motion as a teaching assistant for Cinema 4D and After Effects. At the same time, I began freelance motion design uh, while quickly realizing that Cinema 4D was much too limited for the endeavors I wanted to do, which was more world building and game development. That led me to Unreal Engine uh, in 2019, and I can't believe it's been five years, and I have not looked back since and pretty much spent as much time as possible inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, I went on to then get my Unreal Engine authorized instructor. I still mentor with CG Spectrum, and I also work as an educational advisor with Epic Games. So why am I telling you all this? Is this pathway definitely uh, looks like a linear pathway, but it was more like a spiral. So no matter where you're coming from, like I said, it is never too late to start learning this stuff. It is uh, AI is not coming for your jobs here. There is a long way before we're going to be replaced. They do need people with strong foundational skills, and that's why I'm here to explain them to you. The courses that CG Spectrum offers, visual effects with Houdini, Nuke, 3D modeling, digital painting, concept art, digital illustration, Arch visualization or sorry, architectural visualization, animation, game development. And we're going to be focusing on the game design as well as real time. And that is what we are here for. I'm one of 170 mentors all around the world. So there's definitely somewhere, somebody on the list that can help you learn the skill you're looking for. I did mention we have a really unique community. There's over 4,000 graduates and mentors, and they're constantly sharing progress and updates and collaborations. And it's really amazing to see the uh, cross-disciplinary projects come to life. Okay, now I'm not gonna read all this text because I think it's more important to dive right in and get into what we can actually do here. Uh, some of the things we can do so let's just dive right in. This is more or less the list that I want to go through with you. We talked about what is Fortnite. Uh, myself, I've only been playing Fortnite and using the ecosystem, uh, the, the Fortnite metaverse, if you want to call it that, since UEFN came out, which was 11 months ago. Right. The next step, once you've got the Epic Games launcher, we're going to... Down oh, there's lobby music. Oh my, I'm so sorry. I am going to... Turn that off right now. And and let me know. I did not see that. Are we playing the same song on repeat? Hopefully it is uh, from the sewers to the street. Apply. <laughs> How are we doing now? Is the music on? Okay, great. So sorry about that. Is there anything that I need to uh, backtrack on? that was cut off by music too loud. We're gonna download UEFN and Fortnite 
I'm going to pop open a basic scene. I want to show you some of the differences between uh, UEFN and Unreal Engine. And then I'm going to show you some of the cool things that are not available in Unreal Engine 5 that are inside of UEFN, devices, prefabs, weapons. Uh, these are the things that I did not know about when I first started learning. Then I'm going to show you just how cool the customization can be with the map that I made. Uh, this is more about the UE5 to UEFN workflow. Show some devices in action, how to leverage sequencer and cinematics. So these are foundational skills that you can learn in the real-time courses. Uh, and speaking about uh, devices, I want to show you a little bit about accolades, experience, and have, developing for a younger audience in mind. Okay, then uh, finish off with why UEFN and a little bit about um, the statistics and how you can learn more. All right, let's go in here. Fortnite is running. We're going to launch Unreal Editor for Fortnite. One thing I like about this, and it's you might need a magnifying glass, but you can see in here it's Unreal Engine 5.4. We're currently on 5.3 in UE5. So UEFN, even though it doesn't have all the features of uh, Unreal Engine 5, it is usually a slight step ahead of uh, Unreal Engine 5. Yeah, and Logan Lewis is in there. It it, uh, it always gets the new UI and trips me up. Um, I like seeing that, especially in Sequencer. There's a lot of little quality of life changes inside of UEFN that, uh, that I can see in here that are not in Unreal Engine 5.3. And here we are. This is the first thing you're going to see when you're presented with Unreal Engine, Unreal Editor for Fortnite. They have the ecosystem updates, templates, your first hour, that's basically what we're doing, uh, more or less. But I do recommend you check that out. And it's a course by Matthew Wadstein, and it is an hour long. I know some of you have gone through it. Uh, it just goes over a little bit of, of everything. And then, more importantly, the documentation. This is your best friend when you're looking for solutions. I'm going to select Done. You can always turn that off if you don't want to see that on Startup. I like seeing that to make sure I'm up to date on any of the new updates and documentation. Here we have my projects, and these are some of the projects that I have. Island templates. Now, if you're coming from Unreal Engine 5, island is a synonym for map or level, okay? A UMAP is an island. So all of these things are pre-made islands. We're gonna, grab, we're gonna grab a blank template once I explain a little bit more. Featured examples are a great place to uh, learn. These are more or less sample projects and they have starter kits in verse. Now, what is verse? Verse is UEFN's coding language. Okay? It took me, I don't know, three or four months and it finally hit me like a brick that, oh my gosh, they're trying to make the metaverse. Meta is Facebook and verse is Epic's version of uh, you know metaverse they just cut the meta whereas in my mind i thought it was like verse like multiverse and I'm like no it's metaverse so um i felt really silly not picking that up right away so yeah verse uh, i'll briefly touch on it very very briefly but this is not about programming uh, or coding and you can do a lot without programming or coding and the sample project they have a deserted domination which is a fully fledged game that they made and lots in here all of these are really great learning resources and i highly recommend you check them all out uh, and reverse engineer them in conjunction with the documentation we have the getting started docs and community those three buttons will link you to uh, the same places that they had at the front on the opening screen let's pull that over so this is really where you want to utilize, you know, set up and launch. We're doing that your first hour, creating unique highlands, right? And making games, play testing, publish. This is the whole workflow, right? So don't be afraid to scour the documentation. Okay, let's start with a blank project. And I'm going to just label this demo, CGS demo. And similar to Unreal Engine 5, we're not allowed to use spaces. So underscore. 
Now I have a lot of programs running. I'm going to kill my camera now. That way we're not, uh, we're going to avoid any crashes. Now I'm going to just do a quick question. Who has never used Unreal Engine 5? Is there anyone in chat that has never used Unreal Engine 5? Okay, I'm not seeing any responses. That means great, you have all at least opened or used Unreal Engine uh, to uh, some degree. So it looks very, very similar, but also it's limited here. We have some differences uh, in, the, in what we have. This is the Create button up here, or Quickly Add to Project. I call it the Create button. And it is not nearly as robust as in Unreal Engine 5. This is the Place Actors panel. And we just have basic stuff in here. We've got empty actor, point lights, standard lighting, standard meshes, and your cinematic tools, some VFX stuff, and volumes. So not much in the way of actors, but everything in here uh, is, is, uh, can be imported as well. Sorry, let me close this out. Now, this is the main difference here in the content drawer. When we first open up the content drawer in the bottom here, we have the name of our project, CGS demo content, the map, it gives you your default HLODs and some game feature data. This also took me a minute to figure out that the game feature data is where you have your map. So if you start making new maps and you don't know how to load your map, the first time I published a map, I published a default blank project just like this because I hadn't actually switched over uh, the map that I was working on. So don't be like me. Make sure you don't have that uh, changed up here. So this is... What was that? This is the main difference in here. We have the Fortnite and the Epic folders, and these are not inside of Unreal Engine 5. We have access to about 150 characters, and recently they've added uh, an NPC abilities to make custom NPCs. The consumables are all of the uh, consumables, things like health potions and shields, ammunition. These are all items that come uh, inside of Fortnite. Here we have a cozy campfire. So I can grab that and drag it into the world. And it populates just like that. Okay. Now we have devices. And devices, you can think as pre-made blueprints. Right? If you don't know uh, something like a cinematic sequence here or a character device here, for example. So I did mention the new characters. So we grab a character device. And we can change this to be any character we want. Let's grab Cuddle King. How about that? Nice pink Cuddle King. All right. So great. This is all uh, well and do fine. But how do we get inside of Fortnite? At the very top here, we have Launch Session. Now I'm going to select Launch Session. I'll save what we've put down here. In the bottom corner, it's got all saved. Now we're matchmaking. And I'll pop back over to Fortnite. And now it automatically started loading into our edit session. It was recently just a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles collab. Um, being a child of the 80s myself and obsessed with the turtles ever since I was a little kid, uh, I automatically have been obsessed with it inside of uh, UEFN and Fortnite as well. So this is more or less the holodeck. And this is like, and I just hit double, double tapped on spacebar to fly because you are kind of in God mode. You're in edit mode. And this is a waiting room until I'm loading in the map. And you'll see here, I have current memory usage. Uh, and I'm going to go over, I'm going to talk about memory usage and project size uh, as we go a little bit further along. For now, don't worry about it. You'll just see that top left-hand edit mode cycling along there. And I'm waiting to load up into my map. The heavier the map, the longer that process will take. So, uh, and 
started running automatically. Here we are. These are the spawns, the two player spawns. There's the campfire that I brought in and Cuddle King just standing there. I haven't had him doing anything, just a, a, a pre made asset. And if you are new to Fortnite, campfires will heal you, and you can see those little plus, plus uh, healing signs happening, and then it extinguished. Okay, so we can put wood in there and stoke the fire. Cool. Very, very easy to do that. Now I'm going to alt tab back to Unreal Editor for Fortnite. This is where the power uh, really is unbelievable, is I'm going to go to a prefab. Prefab are collections of buildings, uh, assets stitched together that are ready to go. So let's grab, um, do we have any, we have any um, requests? Logan, Lewis, you got any, uh, what's your favorite? Let's pick something here. Somebody drop something in chat for me to add in here. Okay, I don't see anything. I'm going to grab a cozy cabin because uh, I love the forest. I could grab that cabin. Cruise ship. All right, next one's cruise ship. So here's the cabin. I'm, I'm bringing it in, uh, and we got to have a cabin beside our campfire. And a lot of the hockeys, uh, I think all of the hockeys, so end um, should work. It's not working. That usually drops to floor. But I'm going to position that just in front of our campfire, move it back a little bit. And, and now um, you're going to see in the bottom here, we have 83 assets that are not saved. But I'm just going to check back inside of Fortnite. And in here, we're playing the game right now. Okay, so I'm hitting double, double tapping on spacebar and I'm jumping. I'm not in God mode. I'm not in edit mode. I'm in the game. I'm in the development uh, process of the game here. So I'm going to end the game. Boom, just like that. You saw the cabin just popped right in there. I'm restoring to the island and I'm on the spawn pad. There's player one and I'm player two. And it's probably set to spawn on either one of the pads because we're on the same team. And here's, here's the cabin automatically brought in here. So originally Fortnite was released and then they released Fortnite creative. Uh, how come I can't drag my campfire into the level? That's a question from Byron. So make sure you're in UEFN in the content drawer under consumables. And then we're going to grab our cozy campfire and drag it in. Oh, well, you will not be able to bring it into the level if, for example, I'm going to go new level, blank, create. And I'm not going to save this stuff. And now I'm on an untitled level. I'm not on our default. Go back to the game feature data. I'm not on the CGS demo map, which is the default map, which is the name of the project. CGS demo will automatically make a map with the title of your project and have it as the default. So because I'm on, on a new untitled map that's not been saved and it's not been registered to the cloud. So when I try and bring something in, all right, well, now I look like an idiot because it worked. But so I'm not sure why it's not working for you. But that can be the case. Um, if you do not, uh, if you do not, now it's working. Okay, great. Well, you're, you're working. Uh, I'm going to save this and we have a new level here. Test two. Go back into the other level, which I didn't save, but it is the default. Where's our cabin? And all I have to do is Hover over all, select all, type in cabin. Now we can see all of the cabin parts and pieces, anything that has a cabin associated with it in the metadata. Cozy cabin coming back in. Now you will also notice, or maybe you didn't notice, uh, if you haven't been in here or played around with the snapping, but the snapping sizes are base two. 
two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64. And this is great to have here because these are all the sizes that you should use when you're importing textures inside of Unreal Engine. Inside of UEFN in particular, that brings me to another great point. You cannot have an asset texture size bigger than 2K. So as cool as it is uh, to bring in mega scans and high quality stuff, 4K and 8K will not work. Okay, now we're inside. I'm going to bring in a couple more cabin cottage. Can't have a cabin without a cottage. <laughs> oh, okay, put that over here. And move it over. there's an outside bathtub, just like my house. Now I'm going to hit push changes. And push changes is going to, I'm, I must save when you push the changes. If I don't save, it's going to say dirty assets could not be saved and I'm not able to launch into the live session. So I'm going to push changes, save. And you'll see now we're back to this initialization validating project. And that went really quick. It can take a while. And we're inside here in the, in the top left-hand corner is back to that cycling orange arrows because we're making changes so we're not on the current version so when you see that happening then you know that you're going to be loaded out and loaded into a new copy here right away so i'll just leave that so you can see what happens and see we have our uefn like this Fortnite is still preparing. So this is part of the waiting game. There can be a bit of downtime going back and forth. And now I say that annoyingly, however, having access to this is unbelievable. And having uh, being able to do this without thinking about network replication and multiplayer and servers or anything like that is uh, really, really just... The, the the power of why developing in UEFN is so critical as opposed to trying to do it on your own in UE5. Okay, so it kicked me out and we're back. Now it says game mode. It was, had me running automatically, so I just have to hit escape. Uh, because I was holding down a key the last time I exited, so then when I rejoined, it thought I was still pressing that key. So now it looks just like it does in UEFN. All these Fortnite assets are working and they're all prefab populated. So that's how easy it is to get stuff into your game. And this is probably pretty boring for most of you, but I do think it's worthwhile making sure you can see uh, the process of adding and removing assets. Tab back into UEFN, and now I'm going to open up uh, my map, open new project here, and we're going to continue to load. This is just basically a warning saying like, hey, you're in, you're already in playing Fortnite in the map. Are you sure you want to open up something different? You're going to lose your connection. I am sure. I don't care. Yep. And we're going to grab this uh, WW2 Warzone. Yes, Simon had a question. Was the cottage map at a level where multiple players could be in the level? So absolutely. Um, one thing I haven't even talked about is the the collaboration power of, of UEFN. And I'll just let this load up. And I'll talk about it some more here. So inside of the project button here, we have a project button, and this is different than Unreal Engine 5. And our project settings and editor settings as well are substantially different. We almost have nothing under project settings, uh, whereas the project settings in Unreal Engine 5 are extremely robust. So um, you can see we have share with team, existing team, and create a new team. I could have Simon or anyone from the chat or anyone who I'm working with in here in the map with me developing at the same time, right? And I will talk about that as we talk about the creator portal. So this is a my map here. 
and and you can see I developed it with the idea that uh, because I'm a child of the 80s and I was raised on Nintendo and Super Nintendo and N64 uh, and Call of Duty, the original Call of Duties, Call of Duty 4 on PC. And so I was like, I want to do sort of a five to seven minute uh, level here where you start you start in here. We have our pre pregame lobby area. So the player starts in here. And then they fly, uh, they, you know, if we have four players, everybody loads up and they ready up. And then if, uh, you know, there's somebody's taking too long, then we're just going to override and everybody's going to ready up here. And we're going to head south to the transport and it will take you to the chopper. Uh, I made the meme, the, the war zone, get me to the chopper. For those that have seen uh, Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger, there's a, there's a meme where he's screaming out, get me to the, ch get to the chopper. And it's a it's a classic. Like he says it, like a, like Rashid says, it's a classic, and I love it. So that was the joke. They spawn in right here in this little area, and then they're able to call in some help here. It says call for backup. I'm going to hit G to remove some of the the game view. So that's the same as Unreal Engine Five as it is in UEFN. We have all of our various devices and volumes, and I'm going to hit G. Turn those off. So this is where the player starts and they are meant to head to this A objective and they're battling through some, some uh, uh, enemies here. And then they have to grab this gas. You can't see that here, but it is right here. There's a couple areas to pick up the gas. They have to hop in the, in the truck. There are prompts if you don't get the gas. And so this is more gameplay and mechanic stuff. And so you have to make sure that the player knows how to play your experience. And then the truck drives down here. We come across here and battle a boss guy. We get inside the chopper and we fly away. Okay, so it was just meant to be a test. It was meant to be a, a test to see uh, how far I could push UEFN with Unreal Engine 5 assets. And um, I was really surprised, pleasantly surprised uh, just how much you can crush assets and they can still look good. So nothing in here is over 2K. And I did have to do, um, now I, I mentioned I would talk about this. So we have project size. Project size is different than your current memory usage. Okay, And you'll see here what's happened in the top and left. Editor is not connected. So let's change that and connect our editor. So I'm going to launch session of this map here. And uh, it will take a minute because it's a lot heavier to load up than just a couple of spawn points in a cabin. And while that's uh, matchmaking and loading, we're going to be back put inside the hollow deck, and then we're going to have a loading time inside the hollow deck. So this is a good, yes, I do want to join that session. This is a good time to share with you the little trailer that I made for this uh, for this map. And I made this map over the holidays uh, for myself and a few friends to play um, sort of as, as a joke uh, and, a, and a trial and a test. And I was so surprised and shocked that it has had almost 75,000 people play it. Uh, I am an ambassador with Lartz, Lartes Studios and the assets are from them. And I am thanking them greatly for allowing me to utilize their assets and convert them to UEFN uh, for everybody to use. So here is Warzone, get to the chopper. A, a very, very simplistic, simplistic trailer. And I made that simply because I felt like I had to get something out there after so many people played it. Uh, I was just blown away by that. Uh, and if you check out some of the UEFN trailers, you'll see just how much work and love goes into making those. Okay, so we're inside Warzone, get to the chopper. 
and and we are in the game the game is playing so when you launch a session you're launched right into the game this is live for me so this version is not live for you you can type in that code or search for get to the chopper inside of Fortnite, and you'll be able to play the latest version in there okay so i'm by myself so i can you know ready up everybody if i want to or i can use the override here and this is this is the pre-game lobby so players need to have a space to load in and sort of get ready to play the game okay so originally I didn't have this, which is all about the iteration process. But when you just load up and dive in, uh, it was a little bit confusing. So here we have an intro cinematic. It plays like, all right, what, what's happening? We got a little overview. We've got this thing here. And then, okay, I've collected an Intel discovered. And I have trackers on the left-hand side. Those are devices. So there's a kind of little objectives that you can customize. And I'm going to call in the backup, radio in some backup. And now we have on the screen popping up those, those things. Back me up. Bonus reward for knowing, uh, knowing it, it, it's best not to go alone. And these are bad guys firing already here. And we have a key card indicating that we should go to the A port. I'm going to go into the island settings and turn on invincibility. Bug mode on, invincibility on, just so I'm not dying. And now we can do whatever, but I just want to show you really briefly, um, this, is, this is where we go and test our game. So it's all about iteration and testing. If I design a mechanic, we need to get, excuse me, we need to get the gas before we can get in the car. Gas up the transport truck, equip the gas and activate the truck to get to the chopper. So, okay, now if they didn't know that, oh, maybe they're going to look around. Hey, there it is right there. Oh, there's another spot for backup. Call in some more help. And you also see we have a very large XP reward. And these are accolades. These are uh, ways to give players experience points towards their uh, leveling up their Fortnite characters. So we got the gas. We're going to get in the get in the truck here. And now when I hit E, I have activated the sequence of the truck. I've changed my weapon. We have a grenade, uh, sorry, a rocket launcher. And all these new bad guys came out of nowhere. And the idea is that, uh, and you can actually can't walk off here. You're blocked. You're limited to this space for this section of the, of the game. Air support flies in, wipes out the bad guys. And we get off the truck and see we have the B spot here. And so hopefully the player discovers that they have to go up here. Radio in some more help. Kill the boss. And I'm just going through this as fast as I can, just so we can uh, just get an idea of what it's like to develop and make a game in here from start to finish. And we're free. We've got it. We've done it. We've, we've saved ourselves. We flew away. And I'm going to end the game. I'm spawned back in the pregame lobby, which is what I had wanted to happen once the player completes the mission. We're going to end the game and we will be live. Okay. Please wait. Now they're back into the God mode situation where i can fly around and do anything i want all of this could be made um, inside of fortnite creative well actually that's not true uh, we do need to be able to import all these assets i can delete things from inside here but you can imagine that trying to use um, this style of creation if you're not familiar with it this is the original fortnite creative okay, i'm going to hit tilde and that opens up my phone. And now I'm going to hit tab, which opens up the uh, creator's menu here. So there's our map, island settings. And I will talk about this. This is where the main core of the game is set up. And it's also in UEFN. That's where I want to showcase it. But this is Fortnite Creative 1.0, essentially. And we have all the prefabs and the galleries 
and the devices, weapons, consumables. These are, if they're hopefully looking familiar, because they are the same as the UEFN. We go into the Fortnite folder, characters, consumables, devices, environment galleries. Okay, obviously, there's more, much more robust inside a UEFN, but a lot of those folders are very similar. Uh, and and using leveraging both the content browser in here and Fortnite Creative can help you learn uh, to use the tools a lot faster. Okay, so now how did I get all of these assets inside of here? Well, I actually had to migrate my assets from Unreal Engine 5 into Unreal Engine, uh, into UEFN. So uh, I just, I have a, a I was working on sort of a shield bubble here. Uh, for those of you that are not aware, CG How, great, great at VFX. Uh, and I'm, yeah, helping, helping with some shield bubble here. So let's say I want to bring this shield into UEFN. Uh, if you've ever migrated something from Unreal Engine 5, then you know how to migrate. Uh, the same process is works for UEFN. So let's right-click and asset actions. I'm going to migrate this and I'm not going to save all this stuff here. This is everything I want. We'll bring this into So I would then normally find the map here. I'm going to pull this aside. I don't know where I've saved it. Just give me a moment here. All right, I have found it. So you're going to navigate to your map, and then you're going to find the content, and then you're going to select that content. Uh, sorry, this is the Unreal Engine 5 version. This is why it's live is always fun. Let me find the actual map. UEFN. Sorry, once any questions while I'm fumbling around looking for this map? All right, I've found it. So we have the UEFN Warzone map, and that's the same map that we have right here. World War II Warzone UEFN. Find the window. I cannot find this window here. Close up that material. Okay, there it is. And the only difference is we have a few more folders to click through. There I have the content. Now I'm going to select that folder. And I've migrated the shield over to our get to the chopper. And we just saw a folder pop up there because I'd utilized a few things from the starter content, these textures and uh, noises. So when I search for the shield VFX, there it is. And now you're wondering, why is that not working immediately? Well, I have real time set to off. So that should work now. Should, should is the ideal. That's why we don't have a sphere in there. Right, and now we have our force field, uh, which is completely out of place for this map, but I just wanted to show you the, the process of how easy it is to bring something inside of UEFN from UE5. Okay, I'm going to push the changes, save the shield, and now we'll see that updating inside of our map just the way we did 
with our cabin. Now, this is a good time to talk about the current memory usage versus the project size. Now, memory usage, I'm running right up against the wall. Um, just we have, a, it's this is in units. It's not actually in, it's not 100,000 megs. Um, it is a unit measure that Fortnite uses. I believe um, it's something like 400 megs that's compressed into 200 megs, and then they represent it as this 100,000 number. So things like NPCs and devices and accolades and meshes and textures, um, you know, this this little shooter here, this turret, they all contribute to that number. And uh, there's ways to look at how that number uh, changes. You cannot publish a map if it goes over the memory usage. So this is the struggle of developing for PC, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, mobile, everything, uh, really. So you have to keep all those platforms in mind. Uh, and that's why with this map, I was really pushing to the very edge of what could be brought in and maximizing it. And I, I definitely had to give and take. Um, so that is the in-game memory usage. However, we go back to UEFN. I have this project size. Now, project size right here, it's listed at 93%. And that is in reference to things like this shield that I just imported. It's extremely light. Uh, you know, it's 363 kilobytes and whatever the textures I brought in that came with it. Um, they're also, you know, okay, seven megs. That's a little bit heavier than I would. I would probably scale these down and resize my textures so that they're lighter, but I'm not gonna do that in this demo. The point is everything that I've brought inside here from meshes to VFX to characters, it all contributes to this project size. And when you see it as a question mark here, that's because I need to then uh, push the changes and launch the game before it can register. So if you, migrate for the first time and, and you, oh everything's all good and so these are question marks you might have way too much uh, assets than you know it so i know i'm not i hate to do this deepak i'm calling you out here buddy but i have seen his project a phenomenal project by the way that's why i'm happy to call him out he has a really cool project that he did um and the original uh project size i think was like 50 to 70 gigs Right, because when you're learning and you first get into mega scans, um, you want to throw the and you want to throw the kitchen sink in. You're trying everything, you're grabbing everything, and that creates a lot of bloat. And you're not using everything, but you're trying everything, and so then you can migrate just your level into a new project and get rid of all those assets you're not using. And that is really what I recommend when you say, "All right, I'm building an Unreal Engine five specifically for UEFN. When you do the migration process into UEFN, you only take just what you need. Uh, that way you are not going to be in a situation where your project size is something like 453%. And I have been there and then you go, holy crap, what do I, how do, you know, I need everything. Well, what do you start to strip down textures? You start to remove meshes and you start to call things out. So this is where the game dev process is really about um, picking and choosing what you need for your experience, right? You don't want to just start downloading and bringing in everything because we only have so much room to play with. And right here, um, this is where we have our upload size. So we we have upload size and download size, and the download size must be under 400. We have our cooked size and then the overhead size and dependency size, all right? So making sure that you're under this 400 for your download size and cooked size is critical. And now those question marks went away, which means that we have done the pushed changes. Now I'm going to go back into Fortnite. Our game played. Okay, good. I added the shield and it didn't change. My, um, my memory is still under 100,000. Let's just uh, play the game, override and play and see if the shield, there it is. It's sitting right there. Yep. And it worked. Now you won't see the shield. Like I said, this is just my work in progress. 
So I haven't pushed this change to anyone. But um, if I did publish this, and it's not an actual deal, they can hit me. <laughs> I could make it have collisions and be an actual shield, but that's that's a separate uh, tutorial. <laughs> All right, end the game. I just was uh, wanting to demo how easy it is to migrate assets from from Unreal Engine 5 into UEFN. And that is how all of these assets came in here. I did not do it one by one, uh, shield by shield. I had the level built and cleaned up, and then I selected the entire map and migrated the entire map into UEFN. And then I took that map and uh, cut it and put it into a new UEFN map. So uh, I do want to make sure you, if you are migrating from Unreal Engine 5. So for example, I'm taking, this is my amazing map with a sphere and a shield. And I'm going to take this untitled map. Let's say we have this material map and I'm going to migrate this thing. I would migrate this map into UEFN, at which point I would then open it up, select the entire outliner, control A, edit, copy, and then go to a new level because I don't want any of the build data from Unreal Engine 5 or navigation data, uh, anything like that that's associated with Unreal Engine 5 that does not work in UEFN. Okay, so that is a pro tip there. If you are migrating full levels from UE5 into UEFN, then take that map, select everything, put it in a new UEFN map, then delete the Unreal Engine 5 map. Okay, that is a critical process. And then you'll end up with something like this, and then you can begin to add these devices like teleportation and accolades and cinematics. And speaking of cinematics, I am going to open up the intro cinematic and as well as the truck cinematic, just so you can see how these are made. So Sequencer is the cinematic tool inside of Unreal Engine 5 and UEFN. And I'm going to dock the sequencer on the bottom here. I'm going to select the camera view. Now I'm going to hit play. And this should be familiar because it's the intro scene that you see with the game. And it's just playing on repeat. And I'll move this over. And you can see inside here, uh, it's several cameras. And we're just cutting through cameras. And we have some uh, helicopter action. The helicopters are animated. And that's it. It's one animated helicopter and a few animated cameras, and then we cut those together. You can look at any one camera for the entire time. Right, and this is, this is uh, how we make these really simple edits. This is a linear editing at its finest. <laughs> Nothing magical here, but it still tells the story, right? We're entering the war zone. I'm gonna hit G to hide those. We're entering the war zone. We're going down, oh, there's the beacon pointing to the truck. You know, we can see some bad guys. You can't see them now, but when the game is playing, they are roaming around. So you're getting the, the, the showing you that what you have to do. And then we see the truck, we see the helicopter, and then we see the other chopper at the B point. Now, if this is like, I have no idea how you did this or any of this stuff, then that's, you're in the right place because uh, the real-time course teaches you all about how to animate inside a sequencer and put together these kind of uh, cinematics. And whether you're putting together a game cinematic or you're putting together a cinematic render that's gonna be used for a client, uh, for a production or a product, you know, maybe you're selling makeup and you wanna highlight your, um, makeup inside of Unreal, or you're making a makeup game. And and for <laughs> some people I know do have clients that uh, want that kind of work. Now, if you were able to offer your real-time skills, say, yeah, we can make a we can make a makeup thing and we can do some some lipstick and eyeliner. But what if we also had a game that went along with your render? And then they could go in there and see all the different colors available. So this is where I'm I'm I reference this because I know one of my friends here is who's listening is into that. And you, uh, as the artist, it is your job to start to leverage things like UEFN and Unreal Engine in conjunction together to add value. 
Now, being a real-time artist, um, you might be making a game, you might be making a product shot, you might be doing both, right? Don't limit yourself to, uh, I do I do 3D, I do modeling, I do this. No, you, you add value as a real-time artist, whether it's through Unreal Engine 5 or UEFN, okay? So that that is our intro cinematic. But in the same time, I'm also using the sequencer for gameplay, and that is what really blew me away about using and learning UEFN is all of those skills that I learned with Unreal Engine 5. You know, I'm not a programmer. I'm not going in there and doing C++. I love blueprints and there's no blueprints and uh, or there's very limited blueprints in UEFN. Um, so there, you know, a different way of doing things. And a lot of the way, um, the magic can be done inside of sequencer. So this is our truck cinematic. And you look at this and you go, what the heck is actually happening here? Okay. Well, let me walk you through it. This volume here, and I'm going to hit T because I can't select transparent items sometimes unless I have, uh, uh, allow translucent selection turned on. So if you're trying to grab a box like this or a blocking volume and I, and you don't pick the edge, then make sure you hit T and then you'll be able to select it. This is a mutator zone and that could be set up to do many, many things. I have it set up to trigger a checkpoint. So as soon as the player passes this zone, if they are eliminated by the, by the uh, enemy, then they're going to respawn right here at this checkpoint. So uh, you saw when they went to go in the truck and you didn't have the gas, then this popped up, gas up the truck. This is a pop-up dialogue device that was grabbed from the Fortnite devices. Um, seeing the images is helpful for some. For some, it's not helpful. And you might want to go up to your settings button in the top right here, the gear, and select columns. And now you're able to search by name. Uh, and this can also be helpful depending on what kind of a learner you are. Maybe you, uh, you uh, can scour faster by pattern matching text than you can by using the tiles. Uh, the tiles will be really useful if you're coming from Fortnite Creative and you're already used to going through and grabbing things from the device gallery this way. Now I can get a device from here, we, you know, a button, for example, um, and bring that in from the from the uh, Fortnite Creative, just the same as I can bring it in from uh, inside of here. And we'll go up to the top. There's the button. There's the image, right? So, and then you can, yeah, that's why I like using this for learning, hey, button, configurable button, which can trigger other devices when pushed. Wow, that was really uh, straightforward and easy and showed me right away what the thing does when I click on it. I don't even know what this is. Uh, what's selected? Basic storm controller creates a simple single phase storm. And that is exactly how the Battle Royale operates, is it creates these storms that shrink over time. So if your game was going to uh, mimic or replicate that type of zone war, and zone wars are a very popular game to make, then you're going to be wanting to use these uh, storm controllers here. We have advanced storm controller, uh, and that just, you know, well, that doesn't really help me. Oh, it's advanced. Okay. So you'll have to dive into the documentation to learn more about devices if you uh, select them and, and it's not intuitive for you or you don't know how to use it. Uh, back inside of UEFN, if you do want to grab the documents quickly, you can uh, just select project. Is it in project? Where is it? Help UEFN documentation. That'll bring us right up here. I did mention Verse, the programming language with UEFN, and I have a small snip of Verse in here. And what's a snippet? A snippet is in reference to a small piece of code. So the Verse Explorer is something that is not inside of Unreal Engine 5. And this is where I, I'm not going to go into detail. There's an XP token, and that is adding a tag to my ammunition boxes. So when the player opens up an ammo box, they're getting a small amount of XP. And 
and I have that over here. And this is just to show you that I did not write this. Uh, I know what it's doing and how it works. And I got that from going to the help Well, I'm fearing a crash here. Start, there we go. Okay. Sometimes when you start clicking and nothing's happening, uh, and then I clicked it, clicked on snippets. Okay. Access and share ready to use code blocks and scripts. This is a really good way on uh, learning how to code because uh, often if you just start jumping in and you just try and code from scratch, it's very challenging. But if you grab a snippet and you're reading the code, and you're understanding that, uh, and you're going through the code step by step, it's a lot easier to learn than trying to write this uh, from nothing. So again, this is not about verse, and I'm not going to go through how to create this. If you're interested, please check out the UEFN documentation. But I want to show you on the ammo boxes. For some reason, it's, it's really uh, not reacting quickly now that I have Visual Studio open, I might have to shut it down. With Zoom mixed with uh, having multiple Unreal and uh, Blender and uh, Premiere Pro and too many browsers. So let me close Visual Studio. There we go. Um, so things are conflicting uh, or competing for resources constantly on your computer and zoom is a hog and uh, visual studio is trying to trying to compete with zoom and it was not working out so i do have a little creative device in here and on uh, that little code so each ammo box has this tag added to it Maybe not all of the ammo boxes. <laughs> I have to find them. Uh, I'm going to just continue on the talk here. Um, so those tags are responsible for giving out accolades. And as I mentioned, accolades are experience. And experience is critical. Why do I say it's critical? Uh, because if you think about the player base in Fortnite, and I'm going to end, end the game here and go back into the lobby if you think about the player base in Fortnite, it's probably not the majority of them, uh, like myself, a 40 year old, maybe, but I don't think so. Right. So the majority are kids and teenagers. And if you have a battle pass and the battle pass costs uh, a thousand V bucks and a, and a V buck is, um, you know, $10, uh, let's say a thousand V bucks is $10 and, and that's the kid's allowance. And, and they, you know, they can't just get V bucks whenever they want right? Uh, like a working adult can. So they are working, they got to beg their parents, we want that. And so when you're thinking about designing games, and uh, you want to make sure that you're giving those kids as much experience as possible. And that is going to have them want to come back to your map. And a lot of these crazy red versus blue, and it, this is a box. It's literally a box, right? Two colors and a bunch of weapons, and they just fight each other. But what makes them really cool and why uh, there are cool features, but a lot of the time they give out massive amounts of experience very quickly. And it's really easy to jump in here and get huge amounts of experience and then level up your battle pass really fast. So, um, you know, that's why it's silly to think about, oh, I should be adding more accolades and giving them more experience, but you really should, right? If you, if the player is getting a higher XP per minute and they're seeing their levels go up faster when they're playing your map, they're going to be incentivized to play your map more, right? Of, oh, I'm not getting, I, I played, you know, an hour of OG gun game and I went up one level. I played an hour of Nuketown 2025 and I went up five levels. 10 levels oh hey you know um uh byron you should really come play gun game with me on you know nuketown where i'm leveling up so fast i'm unlocking all those characters i want right we have the battle pass rewards and uh you know i play a lot and test a lot so um i unlock them fast but you know you time is valuable and so if a kid wants to get in here and unlock as many things as possible then that is something they're going to think about Obviously, uh, the fun factor is the most important thing, 
But I just want to mention the accolade thing because when I first built the map, I didn't have any accolades in. I wasn't thinking about accolades at all. I was just thinking, uh, I want to test out how far I can push UEFN with Unreal Engine 5 assets, right? I wasn't thinking that people were going to play it. And which leads me to my next point is the discoverability. So here, these are my most, you know, most favorite of the people on my server. I'm playing in the North American West server. So this might look different uh, on where, depending on where you are. Um, most engaging, again, these are on my server. They're not globally. So the most engaging, you know, in somewhere in the, in the UK is probably going to be different than somewhere in Canada or on the North America West. Then we have by Epic and what people love, the trending, community momentum, new and favorite uh, build fighting combat a variety so that goes back to the categories i can search by categories box fight zone war edit course tycoon death run prop hunt these are all types of games now you're not limited to making a game like this in fact epic uh, encourages you to make something that's unique and different and uh, and that could all of a sudden you could maybe be the person creating a new featured category logan lewis where's your box fight <laughs> get in there where's the where's the superhero box fight is he still in chat he is in there where's the chat like i, I gotta I'll find the chat window uh okay i'm just gonna catch up on the chat i'm, I'm i've um He's about to release a new one. Okay, well, make sure that you uh, follow Logan Lewis and and support each other. Really, there's uh, ten of us in chat here. Um, we we're all here to help each other. And why is it important? Why would you want to make something in here? Well, we hit that eleven month period. We're almost at a year. It's in a year in April, I think, or the start of. Uh, April 5th, I'm not sure the exact date, but Epic has given out something around the lines of $700 million to creators. So you have your digital circus person here, um, Pixel Hunters. There's 120 people on this map. They're getting money. They're making money. This looks really cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm, looks wacky and crazy. Uh, so, you know, and I just randomly clicked on it. Okay, so that's why I really like this is you can just go in here and just discover stuff and find out uh, what you want to play and what you might want to make uh, backrooms. I want to make a backroom game and what's backrooms uh, look up liminal spaces and backrooms if you don't know, uh, and you're going to find uh, a whole kind of stuff about this and so basically it's like a procedural map and you're running around trying to not get caught by one of these uh, crazy bad figures by the looks of it. Okay, so I do want to share with you a website that I think is important to be aware of. Just trying to find it. I have so many tabs open. This is a documentation window. Download on Rio window. Any questions? Yeah, correct. Okay, so there was somebody in here. Yeah, the, the 700 million doesn't account for the split. Epic does take a percentage. So what this does not come for free. Uh, would be great if it did, but I don't have the exact stats in front of me. Uh, maybe uh, if Logan has it, he can link that in there. Uh, but basically, they take, I believe, a 40% cut or a 60% cut, one or the other of the uh, income earned. So still, having 300 to 400 million divided out by creators is uh pretty wild all right just to know that i don't know anyone getting that kind of money on steam <laughs> um so uh, 30 percent is what epic takes maybe so don't quote me on this you'll have to look at it up uh it's still an absurd amount of money right and and to to for me to put out a game organically uh and i'm going there now to show you some of the statistics Okay, so this, where do you find statistics is fortnite.gg, okay? And here is the, this is, you know, I'm Hollows Woodsman, 
And so I'm going to go to creative. And now I can see all of the maps. These are uh, Fortnite creative maps that are, then we can even click on the uh, player count. And we can see these are how many players are playing right now. 2.5 million all time in the last two months, 11.6 million. That was probably when Lego came out or the OG season. Uh, and here's where we have, this is the money being made, right? So let's select, you know, not, uh, you know, the boy Dilly. Who is that? I have no idea. Pretty boy, no idea. These people, uh, I do know Pandaville. These people are making bank you better believe it there's seventy thousand people playing go goaded uh and now we click on that map and then we scroll down and we go what's the all-time player count of all time you know and in the last 30 days um this creator's made between five hundred thousand and one point nine million. and you go wait what are you kidding me are these real numbers and i don't know how real they are uh, i do know that if you go and look at my uh, little for fun map that you know the numbers and i will click on my name uh, and and this stuff's all public public information so you know don't be you know i'm hiding how much i'm making no you're not anybody can go and look and see what they what your map has um you know i'm a little bit sad though come into my map there's 10 people in here there should be 10 not zero <laughs> i'm kidding i'm kidding uh, okay favorite that make sure you favorite your own map um, and you know, I can go all time here and say, okay, yeah, there's, there's the all time 134 to $504. So, uh, and this number, I, I will be honest, it's lower than the output that I got not by much, but so I made, you know, about, um, eight or $900 us from that. And that's not much, but this was from almost no marketing. And this was a for fun experiment. So how did that happen? Well, when you publish a map, you're going to be put into new and UEFN. And I didn't know this uh, until after the fact. And so when I published my map uh, at the uh, it came out was live on December 20, 20th in the uh, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. here. And then it was on this new and UEFN. It was ranked number two for quite a while. And then it slid down to number three and then number four position. And I was getting uh, one of the most uh, really fun experiences I had was I made the map and it was for me and a friend. And then I said, okay, you try the map. And he goes, oh yeah, this is cool. And he had some feedback. And then, then he's on, he's on the Fortnite. He's in here and you can see it shows the number of people playing, right? Okay. OG gun game. We got eight, eight, five. And so then we're, he's looking and, and my map was was up there and it's going, you know, get to the chopper too. And he's like, are you in your map? And I'm like, I'm not in the map. And he's like, well, I'm not in the map. And I'm like, wait a minute, if you're not in the map and I'm not in the map and they haven't given the code to anyone, who's in the map? And that's when things started to uh, happen. And, you know, then there was, I think, 40 people in the map the next morning. And then for a few weeks, you know, I'd see between 20 and 40 people in the map, and which is a small number. It's a really small number, but it was enough to make me a small amount of money, right? Hey, that paid for my utilities that month. I saw a question. Um, how many, how, how long did it take you to make this map? Well, uh, keep in mind that Larta Studios, uh, I'm an ambassador with them. So they gave me the map and the assets and I helped kitbash it together and to, to suit my needs. So I wasn't starting from a blank canvas. I wasn't starting from nothing, right? But I, I smashed that map together pretty quick within a week and then about another week of doing all the gameplay mechanics. Uh, and then um, refinement has taken place. Uh, uh, and you can see here, what are these little blips? These uh, fresh in UEFN, that was cool. Hey, it popped up on, to be fresh somehow. I don't know how. Now, the, this is a mystery. The algorithm is a mystery. Uh, and that's a much, much debated topic on social media. But then uh, anytime you update your map, oh, it popped up into the new updates this week and had some more players on my map. So that is a reason to be incentivized to update your map regularly. Now, the last update... Um, I think it was February 10th. It says here somewhere where it was last updated, but um, there it is. Last update was on February 10th. 
and I believe I'm on version 14 or 15. Um, and so this is where uh, you can get picked up by one of these. Uh, and, you know, when I, when I knew, oops, new updates this week, it was randomly in Middle East and Asia. So as I was mentioning, what, what I see inside of here, inside of my discover is going to be different than what you see, depending on what server you are and where you live. And so I didn't even know that, you know, why is it showing that it's updated in the Middle East and Asia? I have no idea. Um, the algorithm is a mystery, right? There's games on here that are horrible, that are trending, and there's games up that are absolutely unbelievable that never see the light of day, uh, which is a shame, which is why I please help uplift each other. Uh, what is that? Where was it? Pal World? I don't know what that... Pal Knight? Select? Do I dare go in here? <laughs> no, I'm not going in. Uh, you know, we don't want to get sued by Nintendo somehow, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yeah, are there any other questions? I really appreciate the, the engagement here in chat. Um, yeah. So, you know, with kit bashing a map, uh, of that scale three to four weeks and, and this is, it's a heavy map, right? So when you see some of these, when you play some of these maps, uh, and some of these box fights, they are they are very light, and they're all utilizing the prefabs and the galleries inside of here. So when we you know we're, we have these basic materials, so I could make a map entirely out of out of you know I'm making a box with this tile. I'm going to go up into the modeling mode, and then I'm going to a you know select the this thing and then start patterning it out here. Where's the pattern tool? I'm not sure we can pattern the transforms. Anyways, um, this thing could easily be uh, copied and pasted and, and start building these, but these assets are very light inside here. So you have some of these box fights that are no different than just taking one of these and making a box and adding some devices and some mechanics and some weapons and some power-ups and some timers and you get yourself a box fight okay so there's really no excuse on why you shouldn't be in here if you know unreal engine 5 you're gonna know uefn the way i kind of see it is fortnite creative and we can go inside of here and we'll go to the buy epic and there it is creative so this is fortnite creative and this is what I would consider to be sort of, you know, junior, right? This is elementary. And then UEFN is, is um, sort of like high school. And then Unreal Engine is like post-secondary. Okay, so that's kind of this. If you already know Unreal Engine, you already know, you know, you're going from post-secondary back to high school. You, you're going to have no problem. Right? It's the people that are coming from creative that are learning Unreal for the first time that are going to, uh, it's a much steeper learning curve. So because we're running out of time, do you see many interior maps other than box fights? Yes, definitely. There are some really cool interior maps um, and, and I didn't showcase any of those, but there are some, you know, death runs that are all based on interior. Um, now I am going to head back to the CG Spectrum website. UEFN creator account, you must be over 18 and it is tied to your Epic account, but you need to go and sign up to become a creator in the creator portal. And I will just link that in here to everyone for you to check that out. And so then you will become a creator. Um, this is where you have to, and there are some criteria of being a creator and you'll have to explore that, but you, the, and that's to make money. You can, while you're on your way to being a published creator, you can still be developing and creating in UEFN. So, uh, you'll have to check that out, but none of this will be possible without your education from CG Spectrum. Okay. So there's a three month and a nine month program, the three month essentials or the nine month foundation. And really uh, essentials is great. However, 
the nine month foundation is not only going to build you up your animation, your modeling, and your real time skills, but it is also going to allow you to have that time to really build your network and community. Okay, because it's important that you no one learns alone, right? I like I'm sitting in a room by myself, and I've been in a room by myself for what feels like many years, uh, but I've never ever felt alone. Okay, so you're never creating alone, you're never learning alone. We are all here to support each other, becoming a part of the CG Spectrum community and network is critical to success. Uh, I, you know, whenever I mentor, um, I got my first gig from my original cinema 40 ta and i that meant the world to me because getting your first foot in is very difficult anytime i have junior jobs i'm always looking to previous students i've had and i'm always trying to pass on those um you know foot in the door opportunities to my students and people say yeah i can just go and learn this on youtube sure go ahead and learn that on youtube uh, where does the foot in the door button on youtube where is the community button on YouTube? Where is the where is the I'm here to lift you up and support you when you're having a bad day button? It doesn't exist. Okay, so with CG Spectrum, you're able to tap into something where you have that. Uh, and that's why I cannot recommend it enough, joining up and becoming a part of the network and learning about this, right? You're able to ask each other questions. You're able to learn about this. Um, you know, ask me questions, whether it's Unreal Engine 5 or UEFN. When you sign up for these, you're also getting access to the open sessions and the open sessions are with many different mentors and you just pop in and you say, Hey, you know, I want to, I want to learn about blank today, or here's my problem in my project. Can we talk about it? And, and that's what it's there for. So Zoe, uh, thank you. She's linked in here. If you want to learn more about the courses, then check them out. Any last minute questions? There's three minutes. I could do another 90 minutes. Uh, I'm so sorry. I tangent and rant and I try and hit everything I want to talk about. Let me just scroll back in here. Um, uh, one last thing, why UEFN? I have hard drives of games that nobody will ever see because I did everything except the multiplayer aspect because network replication and multiplayer uh, and programming that is is really hard. It's, it's so hard that you need to dedicate all your time to it. You cannot be a technical artist and an artist and a game designer and level designer and network programmer and, and all at once, right? It's, there's just not enough time in every day to do everything unless you're one of those, uh, you know, geniuses. And I'm not. Um, so uh, they never were published. Now with UEFN, I can actually make the games. I can publish it. And then you can jump in and play it. And we can play together. Right, right away. So, and if you are interested in a course on UEFN and, you know, something like a, even a mini course, then please let CG Spectrum know, uh, pressure them, and then they will pressure me to make a course. And I would be more than happy to do that. So if you're watching this in the future, then um, please send them a note, say, I saw this, I saw Logan uh, ranting and raving about how cool UEFN was and that you can start making money with it right away. Uh, if you'll notice all of these layoffs in the gaming industry, pretty terrifying. 900 here, 1600 there, 50 here, 40 there. It's just, it's almost like weekly. Uh, it's all going to user-generated content uh, like yourselves. So you publish your map and your map blows up and there's 70,000 people playing it every hour. Uh, and then you can send me a screenshot of your Fortnite.gg. <laughs> Here's my... Uh, Here's my earnings. Uh, so please do that because uh, it gets me really excited to create. And I hope you are all excited to create. And yes, Rashid, I am uh, ranting and raving as usual. He's a, a good friend of mine. Thank you for coming and supporting me. I really appreciate it. So I look forward to running on these again uh, in the future. And please ping Zoe or Simon or myself or anyone at CG Spectrum if you have more questions about this. All right. Uh, hello at cgspectrum.com. And that is a goodbye from me. Thanks uh, so much, uh, Logan Lewis and uh, Byron and Oliver and Rashid Keyframe. Um, all of you, I appreciate it. And Tamara, uh, Guido, uh, I will see you around the community, hopefully. Okay. Bye, everybody.